Hello there, it's your hand of whiskey lore and time for another whiskey tasting. Today, I'm going to be doing a tasting of a whiskey that I mentioned yesterday in my episode talking all about my trip to Spain and Spanish whiskeys and the rest. I end up in a Barcelona whiskey shop and what do I walk out with? All those scotches, all the you know American whiskeys that are there. I end up walking out with a French whiskey. And this is a brand that I have tasted on the show before, but it's a different version of it. It's Yunle, and this is the um, Jovic expression. This is from Amork, and this is a peated whiskey. And in fact, when going through the writing on the back of this, it talks about this whiskey, uh, and it mentions that it's non-chill filtered, natural color, and that it is whiskey torby. Whiskey torby. What does that mean? Well, it means that it is peated whiskey. That is the French term for peated whiskey. It says it right there on the front. Now, my sisters inspired me because of how well she was doing with her Spanish. And I started to learn French in high school and I've actually gotten good enough at it that I was able to travel to Quebec and to France and be able to speak with people to a certain extent, not as well as she was speaking to people in Spanish, uh, but I, I have been inspired to go back and learn again. And so maybe my pronunciations will be getting a little bit better because I am definitely rusty on my French pronunciations. Okay, this whiskey. Now, when I remember the first one really impressed me, and this comes from the Brittany region of France. So it is the northwest corner of France. And there are peat bogs there, but they cannot use French peat because of the laws of cutting that natural product. So this peat would have come from Scotland. And yet the barley would have come from France. And a lot of Scotch whiskeys get their barley from France because France is a great growing area for barley. And so when we're talking about French whiskey, you may think, well, I mean, how long have the French been doing whiskey? Well, really only back into the 1980s. But this is one of the oldest distilleries there. And because of the climate, because of where it's situated, right on the Atlantic Ocean, they tend to get the same, maybe a little warmer, but tend to get the same types of weather that Isla would get or that the west coast of uh, Ireland would get. And so your thoughts would be, well, this is probably going to have some similarities to some Scotch whiskeys from Isla or maybe some of the new peated Irish whiskey. Look at how light a color that is. And so this is non-age stated ex-American bourbon barrel. And uh, let's do some nosing and tasting on this. So at 46%, I think that's a great spot for this. On the nose, apple stands out and smoke. And the smoke is more of a matchstick smoke. I would place it close to an Ardbeg kind of a, of a scent. It's, a, it's, got, um, it's got a hint of medicinal to it, but it, it's not really what you expect when you come to an Ilo whiskey in terms of that medicinal. Just a nice, soft, seaside kind of a smoke. Cheers. So the palate is where this becomes very interesting because this has a bit of, again, the Ardbeg theme continues. It has the ashy Ardbeg kind of smoke, but it's very, very tamped down. Ardbeg, in some ways, kind of gets on my nerves a little bit with how ashy it is. And this pulls that back a bit. There is a little bit of that rubber tire note. I don't think it's a negative. 
it's just something that you get sometimes with medicinal whiskeys. Um, and so it's just a little bit there, lays sort of slightly bitter on the tongue. The caramel notes are there, maybe a hint of mint coming through, a fresh mint. And that smoke is in there as well. The orchard fruit never is really far away. I can't necessarily say that it has a finish that I'm in love with. It is a long finish. The things that I might appreciate about this whiskey, the apple does hang there. The smoke does hang there. The ashiness, again, never really fully um, hits you. It's just there subtly. And in a lot of cases, I would say very balanced whiskey because of all the different flavors I'm getting from smoke to the sweet fruitiness, uh, maybe a little citrus in there. That, in fact, that's kind of what's on the palate is a little bit of citrus rind coming in as well. Some nice complexity there. I think the only thing that would probably pull me back from a great rating on this is the is how they all infuse together. They seem like different experiences. They don't feel like they've really combined themselves into a pleasurable experience. It's like they're all kind of doing their own thing and whatever you pay attention to at that particular moment is what's really sticking out to you. And so they need to infuse a little bit more. And maybe that's something that happens with time because this is a whiskey that is non-age stated. Don't know how old that is, but it looks like, you know, something that when we talk about, again, Ardbeg, you know, that's probably Wee Beastie area in terms of color, may even be lighter than Wee Beastie, which I didn't think was possible. I thought water might be you know, anything lighter than Wee Beastie. But um, really interesting whiskey. Um, I, I feel like, you know, we need to stretch out beyond the borders and try some whiskeys from different areas. France has a growing whiskey industry. And so this was an interesting one. And I'm, I'm happy I brought this one home. This is going to be one that, you know, over time I will um, impress people with the, the quality of French spirits. And the whiskey is not green. <laughs> that is a slightly green tinted bottle. When I first got this, I'm like, why is it green? Um, but... That is not the liquid. That is the subtly colored, beautiful bottle there. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little tasting um, adventure that we've gone on. And I definitely am happy I brought this one home. And uh, have you had French whiskey? What do you think? Uh, is there one you recommend? Or are you like, French whiskey? Why the heck? Uh, leave your comments below. Please subscribe if you'd like to watch more of these videos, if you haven't already, and give me a like if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, cheers and salam jubah. Or should I say, santé.